Watch Dr. Drew's new show at 9 on HLN. Weeknights on HLN. Alicia, can you understand um, people like me who just hate mothball smell? I can't stand it. But it must be, it must be quite an offense to you. But my understanding is that for you, this is a, a strong association with your grandmother who had mothballs around her, and that was somebody yes. you were deeply attached to. Is that correct? That is correct. And I'm not offended by the fact that you hate the smell because I get that a lot from other people. But I actually love it, and it does give me a connection to very fond memories of my grandmother and spending time at her house, which is where I first discovered that I loved the smell of mothballs. So, Dr. Sharp, um, do you agree with me that this is sort of a bid for emotional regulation, but not only that, but it's also maybe some sort of, I don't want to say disorder because that's putting a negative spin on it. I hate to do that, but just sort of an alternative kind of an attachment. Rather than being attached to grandma and dealing with the loss of her, you stay attached to the mothballs. An alternative attachment or a substitute attachment, you know, we're so powerfully influenced by our senses. When I was researching my book, The Emotional Calendar, I found all kinds of examples of just this kind of thing, how people are so not addicted or maybe not compulsorily kind of driven, but just wanting to have more kind of feeling, and even if it comes in through what could be a toxic chemical, which is mothballs. And, and Alicia, does it, does it surprise you that people think this is peculiar? Because for you, it seems like something that you indulge in, you love. No, it doesn't surprise me. I've been teased about it. Uh, family and friends have no joked problem. about it for years.